Now I'm starting this video off a little bit differently than normal. We're over on the test bench and here what I've got uh, ready to show you today is a feed for a uh, dish and this is a 5G feed. This is for the uh, 5G frequencies. It does claim to be a 5G only feed but as you'll see on the network analyzer we've got a secondary response in those mid ranges just like I did on the uh, patch antenna, panel antenna that I uh, showed you quite recently for 5G and uh, we can see here it's quite big it's taking a lot of space up I'm not testing it with the dish because I don't think it's going to make any difference but when I attach it to the dish I'll double check just to make sure and I will tell you but uh, yeah it's taking a lot of space up on the test bench it's uh, got both vertical and horizontal so uh, that's what those two feeds are going in there so we're going to test them at the same time so we're going to be looking at two traces the horizontal and the vertical of this uh, 5G feed for a small dish. So looking at the analyzer then we're scanning from 1500 megahertz over here all the way up to 4.3 gigahertz and we've got this lovely little dip on both traces here in the vertical and the horizontal and if we take a look at the cursor I'll move the cursor 3.25 gigahertz there going on to 3.3 3.4 gigahertz and it starts to go up it's still good for about 3.5 gigahertz there so it's definitely in that range for the uh, 5G uh, networks but as I said we're also getting this secondary response over here just like we did when I showed you uh, that uh, little patch antenna that I built the 9dB one in a quite a recent video we also got a second harmonic response and this is around 1 point uh, sorry 1800 megahertz up to around 2.1 gigahertz there and you know that's the secondary response uh, that you would get. I mean uh, at the end of the day a quarter wavelength in the spectrum is an eighth of the wavelength somewhere else in the spectrum and also uh, you know even uh, half wavelength somewhere else in the spectrum so you're always going to get these secondary points but uh, this feed is uh, advertised as just 5G only so I'll be interesting to take a look on the inside of this. Somebody has purchased uh, a more multiband one uh, of these uh, feeds for a satellite dish and put some pictures on uh, the Facebook group antennas and uh, it'd be interesting to have a look at his photographs compared to the ones that I'm going to be taking of this on the inside but you can see both of those trays, traces in the horizontal and vertical converge really nicely here in that uh, 5G frequency band uh, you know 3.3 gigahertz to 3.5 gigahertz a really nice response from both of them there now I'm eager to take this apart but uh, before we do let's just take a quick look at the outside as far as the DB rating for this is concerned on its own um, the elements that are going to be in here will probably be working at around 7 DB maybe even only 6 DB but because we're using it in conjunction uh, with a dish uh, that's going to jump up significantly now in the original advertisement for this from the seller he had it rated at uh, 24 dbi and you can see on here it's uh, got a sticker on here saying 30 dbi now yeah they're in the ballpark if you're using this with a dish it just depends on the, the size of dish you're going to use with this uh, so you know around 25 26 dbi is not out of the question with an average di uh, dish now looking at the construction most of it's made out of metal I just love this sticker here I mean uh, I posted a picture of that over on the Facebook group it just winds uh, conspiracy theorists up but uh, you've got these two uh, n type connectors here and uh, at first glance you might think oh they're pretty cheap because they're only small they haven't got the depth that uh, a normal n type would have but if we uh, connect it up to this little adapter here screw it all the way in you'll see when I do that there's now a little lip around there because uh, of the smaller profile of uh, this uh, connector here and because this is designed to be uh, mounted outside that allows you to put a bead of silicone right in there 
and then waterproof this and uh, you know if you want to uh, take it down it's easy to pick that bead of silicone out and uh, then unscrew it so that's why that's there and that's why you've got uh, a low profile end type connector here it's not to save money it's to so you can uh, waterproof it and the coax on this uh, looks uh, really good quality coax you can just feel by the way that um, you know you can manipulate this it's uh, well shielded coax i love how it's in this clear uh, sleeve in here so you can see the uh, inside of that but you can see the weave is really really tight really uh, you know really thick stuff it's really going to do the job there with the shielding and uh, as i say this is uh, designed to be mounted to uh, a dish and most of the dishes that you buy um, have the same kind of uh, focal point for a uh, connection like this but uh, yeah unfortunately say here in the UK dishes are hard to get hold of and the dishes can be significantly more expensive than uh, the feeds that uh, you use with those dishes some other parts of the world I know dishes are easy to come by um, I've been trying to find uh, a, a decent uh, uh, three meter dish or even you know 1.5 meter dish here in the UK to use for uh, a radio telescope and it's really difficult to find dishes in this country but uh, I do know in other parts of the world it's a lot easier so take that into consideration uh, check out the prices of the dish before you buy something like this now looking at the end of the uh, feed here this is where the elements are um, it's made mostly out of plastic at the end, the end here so you know that makes sense you want those uh, microwaves to penetrate the plastic but on the end here we've got a uh, piece of metal and uh, that might may confuse some people um, you know especially if uh, you're not used to this kind of equipment you might think well why is there a piece of metal on there but you've got to think that this let me zoom out is designed to work with a dish so the signals are coming in this way bouncing off the dish and then a parabolic dish is going to focus those uh, microwaves onto this point here and this is acting like a secondary reflector so any microwaves that pass by here will uh, potentially hit this and then get you know rebounded back on so you get a second crack at those uh, microwaves now as for getting into this i think this is going to be difficult um i don't want to destroy it uh, if uh, i don't have to i'd like to put this back together again so i'm going to try and pry off this uh, metal reflector here first and see if that's uh, an easier way of getting in here because it is waterproofed really really nicely we've got a lot of silicone around here and uh, silicone in the join of this as well so it's you know it is made to uh, be mounted outside so i think the best way to get into this is going to be through here first so let me have a go at that now i managed to get this off as you can see but it took a little bit of persuasion i also had to get a bit of heat into this as well just to soften all this glue up around here and uh, the uh, pvc pipe once i'd done that it came off quite easily but you can see we've got a a uh, second reflector in here it's not um thick uh, there is an air gap in between uh, here and uh, here but we have got this second reflector which is uh, quite nice and you can see down on the inside there we've got the elements remember this is uh, just for the 5g um, you can buy these where they're more broadband covering all the frequencies and uh, somebody has purchased one of those and put some uh, pictures up on the antennas forum but this one you can see by the size of it it's just made for the 5g um, I'm going to uh, have to try and get some more of this apart uh, just to uh, take a closer look at this I also want to measure the elements there and I've got it in uh, the correct polarization with the arrow here so you can see here element here element here that's the vertical and then you've got the horizontal across here so you can see how these two elements are connected together and these two elements connected together underneath uh, that uh, little arm there so that's the vertical and the horizontal but uh, one upgrade you could do with this and uh, potentially make it uh, 
perform even better is if you uh, got rid of this reflector and used a uh, secondary parabolic reflector um, the uh, focal point of this uh, parabolic reflector is around here uh, I can't remember the exact measurement now so you'd have to cut away some of this PVC piping to get this a little bit closer but uh, if you did have a uh, secondary uh, parabolic reflector it would perform a lot better than just a normal box standard reflector because again it's parabolic it would focus that uh, energy onto those uh, elements just like the main parabolic dish would, would and you see this in a lot of professional setups where you have the two parabolic reflectors uh, the main one and the secondary one so a nice little upgrade straight away would be to add a second parabolic reflector to this but uh, yeah it's, it's uh, build quality so far it's quite nice I mean even the PCB in there uh, you can see they've even got silicone again round there to stop any water ingress so I'm pretty pleased with the uh, build quality so far now as you can see I managed to get it out of its housing a little bit of persuasion and uh, a little bit of heat helped but I've got a bit more lighting on here now and we're a little bit closer because I want to go over some of the uh, measurements and uh, how this antenna actually works and on first glance it's a very similar design to uh, this antenna that we took a look at uh, not long ago this is a Catherine antenna or at least I don't know if it's pronounced a little bit differently in German but it's from a German company that uh, specialize in uh, cell tower antennas and you can see that uh, the design of this is very very similar to uh, this one here um, pretty simple really and uh, on its own not a great deal of gain but uh, like this they're clustered together in a sector antenna extremely powerful and this again in combination with a dish again extremely powerful but on their own they uh, don't produce that much gain but uh, let's go over the design now as I said I will make a, a PDF with all the measurements on this so you know if you want to have a go at making one or even etching one uh, you can do but uh, this isn't any kind of reflector it's just some FR4 board uh, just as a support backing for the uh, elements themselves uh, probably used FR4 because it's cheap easy to get a hold of and uh, the dielectric constant is uh, well known now as for the uh, overall dimensions of this antenna if uh, we think of this as one square it's 32.5 millimeters by 32.5 millimeters the height here of these bottom legs now that is uh, 20.6 millimeters so it's 20.6 millimeters high because of course you could add a uh, reflector to this if you wanted to use it as a standalone antenna like uh, this is here and uh, you know you quite easily do that but uh, the main driven parts of this uh, element are uh, these two pieces here these little cross pieces now these little cross pieces measure 12.6 millimeters long and they're 3.5 millimeters wide so they're very very small and this is uh, a shorter design it's all shorter together but not just slapped together as it were um, let me zoom in a little bit on this So hopefully the camera will stay in focus but you can see this is the main element as I said and it's soldered down onto this end of the element. Remember this is one element separate and this is two elements separate but they are grounded together and shorted but uh, this one is shorted down onto this side but on this side you can probably make out we've got uh, a little bit of dielectric insulator there so it's not automatically shorted down onto this side like it is on this side and that's very important for this antenna to uh, radiate any RF energy if that wasn't there it would just be completely shorted and wouldn't work very very interesting uh, design so uh, you can see there a little bit of an insulator but on this side completely shorted and it's the same on the underside as well 
Now, if you were to make this, I'm uh, not sure if you could get away instead of having to cut out these intricate shapes here. We've got rectangles, and then we've got this uh, triangle here shape. Um, whether you could get away with just drilling holes, uh, you know, like a Vivaldi antenna, or uh, even it'd be interesting to see what would happen if uh, you had these uh, that were just filled, uh, you know, one surface area i think it's probably got uh, more to do with the uh, vswr of this antenna because this antenna just like uh, this one as well the uh, vswr of these types of antennas is pretty high around 1.8 um so probably to get the vsw uh, below two that's why we've got these uh, cutouts here and it's the same with the other one as well the other one looks uh, more like a bicoil antenna but it's not but uh, I'm just wondering if you could probably just get away with drilling those holes just to make it easier if you wanted to build these. You probably can. But uh, yeah, it's a very, very uh, interesting design. Very, very simple. And as I said, not a lot of gain on its own. All that gain that this comes, uh, comes with this uh, kind of feed comes from that uh, parabolic dish that you intend to use this with. And the coax is interesting as well. It kind of reminds me of uh, a semi-rigid coax without that solder put on the outside. You can see here where they've tinned up on here to solder to uh, the outside of the uh, element here to ground it. And uh, where we don't have this tin, it does just kind of reminiscent of uh, semi-rigid coax. So it's uh, interesting, not what I was expecting to find on the inside of this. Uh, the one that uh, one of the users over on uh, the Facebook group, Antennas, uh, he's take, taken a, a teardown of his feed, which is more of a, uh, a broader range of frequencies, uh, his feed. I think it works, you know, from 700 megahertz all the way up to the uh, 5G's uh, 3.8 gigahertz. And his is uh, a PCB. But this is a solid piece of metal. Now, one very important thing that I forgot to mention so far is the length of this feed. From the, the start of the feed here to where the uh, elements are is 320 millimeters in length. So when you uh, purchase a dish to use with this, you need to purchase a dish that has a set focal length of uh, 320 millimeters from its center otherwise you're going to have to start uh, either chopping bits off this or adding uh, bits on to catch the uh, focal point of your parabolic reflector so it works so i thought we'd finish the uh, video back on the test bench exactly where we started i've hooked it up to a uh, dish as you can see this is the kind of dish that you would need to uh, use this feed um I mean, it is uh, a nice feed. I mean, I can't complain. Uh, I paid about 40, 45 pounds for this free shipping. It is a 5G feed as it claims to be. It is going to be up there in the, the uh, 20 dB range when you use it in conjunction with a uh, dish like this. Really, really nice um, frequency response in those uh, three gigahertz frequencies where you need for uh, 5G and you also get that second response uh, lower down but uh, yeah it's really nice it's well built uh, waterproof and if you're looking for something like this and you hook it up to a dish like this i don't think you're going to be disappointed now if i was looking to uh, increase uh, my signal strength for the cellular networks and use uh, you know the broadband features of uh, a cellular network I think I would uh, personally go with something that's a little bit more broadband. You can buy these feeds that uh, cover the entire range of frequencies for the cellular networks from uh, you know 700 megahertz all the way up to uh, 3.8 gigahertz for the 5G and you can pay around 70 75 pounds for those feeds. So you know if I was going to do something like this I would uh, implement a more broadband feed. I wouldn't just uh, concentrate on the 5 G unless I had you know really good access in my area and I just wanted to you know have that super super fast uh, broadband on the 5G but I think I'd go with something a little bit more broadband especially if I'm going to permanently mount this on the outside outside of my home for example 
So I hope uh, you enjoyed this video, found it useful, and uh, if you're looking to uh, invest in something like this, hopefully this uh, helped you. It is a really nice, well-built feed. I can't grumble at the build quality. I can't grumble at uh, the frequency response that it works at. It really is a nice piece of kit. And, you know, I'm sure you wouldn't be disappointed if you just bought the 5G one or you bought one that's uh, more broadband. It really is a nice piece of kit so if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up comments or questions drop them below i'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one